You see guys, dictionaries are very nuanced. We see them everywhere. In C Sharp, they're called a dictionary. In Java, they're called a hash map. But what would actually drive somebody to use a dictionary when we could just use a regular old list? And there's many ways to answer this question, but I'm going to answer this question in the fashion that a computer scientist would, and that is, Search is expensive as shit with arrays and most data structures for that matter. In fact, dictionaries are almost a magical data structure where things can be searched in O1. If you're not familiar with O1, O1 is literally the fastest computational time complexity there is in computer scientists and hash maps allow us to search in a very fast way. But most of this is only going to be discovered once you get into very large data sets, hence why we use a list most of the time. But once we start getting into larger, more complicated sets of data, a dictionary is going to be absolutely imperative. But the story doesn't stop there. Let's take a look at our old friend, Mr. List or Mr. Array, whichever you want to call it. They are the exact same thing. Whenever we want to use a list or whenever we want to use an array, all that we have to do is just make an array and we can quickly pluck out the individual values that we want. Very similar to a grocery list or any other type of list that you would have in your daily life. And lists themselves are actually very useful in that sense. Whenever you just need a quick list of something, it makes sense that you would just have things stored in a side-by-side -side fashion. But Imagine if you had a grocery list or you had some other type of list and it had literally thousands and thousands of entries. What's going to happen is first, it's going to be very cumbersome to get values out of it because there's so many values. And it's also going to come with another hit and that is going to be, it's so difficult to search through something that has thousands of values. Imagine if you had a grocery list and it had thousands of values inside of it. And each time that you wanted to find, I don't know, your carrots or something, you had to go through that list, each individual one and search through it. And a computer is not that much different from your brain in that sense. A computer, if it had to search through thousands of individual values inside of a list or inside of an array, it's going to become very computationally expensive. And this is where the dictionary really starts to shine. Now, hypothetically speaking, just play along with me here. This makes absolutely no sense. But imagine that you had a grocery list of thousands and thousands of items. Wouldn't it make more sense to actually store the item in a key value pair where, where you could actually store whatever type of grocery that you're buying in the form of a word? Well, that is the beauty of dictionaries. We have these things called key value pairs and we can store things as a number or any immutable data structure, but most likely it's going to be a string. And not only do we get the added benefit of just not having to memorize all of these numbers and access things in a index based fashion like an array, but we also get the added value of extremely fast search. But how does this magic happen? How is this crazy search magic actually happening under the hood? When you actually utilize a dictionary, when you actually utilize a hash map, what's going to happen is the computer is going to run the word that you input into the dictionary through what's called a hash function. And this hash function is going to produce a number that's going to be tied to the actual key that you inserted. And whenever you insert it, it's going to quickly grab the value out of the data structure. And that is why we actually get super fast search because there's no actual iteration happening. It's just producing a number and tying it to that value. But how did, like, what does that actually mean? Well, hashing, and I've, this is kind of out there. We don't, you don't actually need to know this, but I'm going to explain it to you because I kind of feel like I'm obligated to is hashing is a very common thing in computer programming. Let's just say here we have the word hello goodbye, and I want to change the word to hello goodbye too. This is going to translate to a totally different number. And I'll just put, 
I don't know, three, four, five. And whenever we want to turn it back into the same exact previous value before, it's going to produce the same exact value. And that is the beauty of hashing. If the same exact word were to be passed, it's going to be passed to the same exact value. And that's why we get these super fast searches because if we were to insert it, it would be able to quickly find it using that hash function. And lastly, we're gonna go through a very real life scenario. We're gonna go through a scenario where you have an exponential time complexity algorithm and we're gonna juice that algorithm. We're going to get that algorithm to go a lot faster with the power of dictionary. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's do some coding. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and create a new class and I'm going to call this solution. Since we're working on algorithm, algorithms is probably best that we break this apart and create a new class just for the actual algorithm. And the actual algorithm that we're going to be working on is going to be the famous twosome. This is an incredibly easy algorithm and it's both applicable to daily life and it's also applicable to interview questions as well too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to declare a uh, actual method. It's going to return an int of array and we'll just call this twosome. And what I'm going to do is create some parameters. We're going to pass in an array of nums and we are going to pass in a target. Now, if you don't know what a target is, let me explain it to you very quickly and just explain the actual to some leak code problem to you. Once again, incredibly easy. All that we're going to do is we're going to search through this array right here and we're trying to find the two numbers in this array that equal nine. And if you just look at this array, the actual numbers that we're going to be using are going to be the same exact numbers. And you can see here that two and seven equal nine, our very first combo is going to be the answer. But let's just play along here and just kind of do this for learning purposes. Now, there is many different ways. We're going to solve this with a dictionary, but it's imperative that we solve it the bad way. This is going to be the slow, not good way. Then we are going to optimize it with a dictionary. So I'm going to go into here. We're going to create a for loop. This for loop is just going to be your very standard for loop that's going to iterate forward. Now we're going to go i is less than nums dot length, and we are going to say i plus plus. And all this for loop is going to be designed to do and any for loop that you see that has this same exact syntax is going to iterate through the actual array forward. But things start to get a little bit dicey. How are we actually going to find the second number? It's easy to find the first number. All that we have to do is just iterate through the array with just a regular for loop. How would we find the second number? There's many ways to do this and the good way to using a dictionary we're going to use just in a second but we're going to do the bad way the very inefficient way and that is to use a second for loop a nested for loop inside of a for loop and this this does work but this is not ideal but we need to we need to do the bad way before we can actually do the good way and what we're going to do is we're going to go into here and we are going to declare another for loop with the variable j now notice something i said i plus one and the reason that we have to use i plus one is because we have to start at the second number we've already searched the first number in the array with our first for loop we need to start the second number with our second for loop otherwise it really wouldn't make that much sense so we're going to go into here we're going to say nums.length and we are going to go ahead we're going to implement or we're going to iterate on this j next thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of just think about this just as we would solve any other form of a problem. What are we going to have to do? We have to check to add these two numbers to see if they actually equal the target. And all that we have to do is do it with an if statement. And what we do is we say I, uh, or we say nums I, and this is going to access the first element in the, iter in the iteration of the first for loop. And then we're going to say nums j and this is going to access the actual second number and each time that this actual for loop iterates it's going to go through and it's going to search first it's going to search this one then it's going to go boom 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 and then it's going to search this one then it's going to go boom boom so all that we have to do is go into here and whenever we actually find the two numbers that actually equal each other we're just going to return them and we're going to return the indexes because that's what leak code wants so we're going to here and we're going to return the actual i and the j. 
and let's we'll say ij we'll close this out with an actual semicolon then because this is leak code and if you don't do this it's going to give you an error we need to go down here and we also need to throw an exception and we're just going to say something along the lines of uh no solution we'll say no solution right here we'll go ahead and close this out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy all of this and we're going to run this in leak code. I'll leave the link for the leak code problem down below, but go ahead, just slam that into leak code. Might want to spruce this up a little bit, make this look a little bit better. And let's go ahead and run it, make sure that it works, it's accepted, and let's go ahead and submit it. Now I've already submitted this before and leak code now has the feature to be able to analyze the complexity right after you submit it. They just implemented this and this is awesome. Let's check out the time. Oh my God, an exponential time complexity. How could we do this? We failed the interview, but we have a secret weapon and that is going to be the dictionary. So the first thing that we need to do in order to actually optimize this algorithm is first we're going to have to actually create a dictionary. If we're going to use a dictionary to actually optimize the algorithm, we need to create a dictionary to store the actual values that we're going to be using to optimize it. And you could use a string here, but I'm going to go ahead and just store an int of an int. And this is the key, this is the value, pretty simple, and it's just a good form of type checking. So where does the actual dictionary come into play? Well, the real part that's destroying the speed of this actual algorithm is right here. The nested for loop is pretty much a death sentence. If you're using a nested for loop in any type of algorithm, it's pretty much going to be exponential time complexity, which is going to cause you to, in a sense, fail the interview. I hate to say it, but it's probably going to cause you to fail the interview if you can't optimize it, but we're optimizing it. And we're going to be optimizing it once again with the actual dictionary. And all that we're going to do is first we need to find the complement. Now we did this before. If you look, we actually did this before. This is the actual complement right here. But because we're going to be uh, doing a little bit more logic right here, we're just going to store it in the form of a in the form of an actual variable. We're going to destructure it a little bit. We're going to have the target minus the nums. And the complement is actually a math term for people who are uh, math whizzes out there. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the dictionary. Now this doesn't really make a lot of sense yet, but it will make sense here in a second. We're going to check the dictionary key, the first value, remember key value. We're going to check the value right here. And what we're going to check for is going to be the actual complement. And this is what we're going to be searching for. After we check this, what we're going to do is we're going to return it. If it contains the complement, we've attained what we wanted. And what we're going to do is just like in the algorithm before, we're going to return the actual indexes and we're going to return it in the form of an array. So we'll go into here and we're going to say the uh, dictionary and we're going to pass in our complement right here. And this is going to, act, this is actually what's going to grab the value out of the dictionary. So go right here, we need to go ahead and add a semicolon, but how is this actually eliminating the for loop? Well, that would actually be a very good question. And if we don't find the actual complement, what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the actual dictionary. And this is what's going to store those values almost in the form of a state. Watch this. So we go into here, we're going to say the dictionary, we're going to say if it does not contain the key, and if it does not contain nums i right here, what we're going to do is we're going to add it. And this is what's going to eliminate the actual second for loop because it's actually functioning like a second for loop in a sense, but it's going to be searched in n and it's just going to quickly pluck out the values instead of actually iterating over it. So we're going to go into here and we're going to actually add it and we're going to say nums i. And then we're going to go ahead here and we're going to pass in the i. And this is going to pass in the index. And this is what's going to actually store these values and allow us to actually search for them later. And this is pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's grab this code right here and let's go ahead, toss it in leak code. Go over here, gonna bring out leak code. Go ahead, copy and paste that in. Let's do a little bit of cleaning right here to make sure that it doesn't look that bad i'm sure that you, you don't have to actually do that but it does make a little bit of difference so i'm going to go ahead and run it make sure that the actual test results come out good 
and then let's go ahead and submit it and let's see how much our complexity went down if we look at our complexity what we're going to have is we have n instead of exponential we now have an n complexity which is passable for a leak code style interview congratulations you passed the interview anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button make sure to smash that like uh, subscribe button and as always thank you for watching